What's up guys, this is Ox from X Trades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. And um, we're going to go ahead and get into the indexes too after this. Um, we'll go over the futures today. Just because they're trading right now, you can see they're up about uh, almost 1%. Um, you can see on ES, 0.88. Um, RT watch, this is small to mid caps. It's a 0.86. Dollars up a little bit, but nothing too concerning. But let's go ahead and get into our first one. Um, I'm going to give you a fair warning here. All these calls um they're going to be call set up so we're going to be looking for upside um cuz you see a lot of stuff is breaking out so you have to go with the technical analysis and um but we also have to be careful cuz earnings is coming up uh, for a lot of big names like Apple, Microsoft, etc. So let's get into our first ticker here. Um ticker symbol HPQ, it's HP. So we can see it's breaking out of this downtrend right. You got test number 1, test number 2, test number 3. And then finally it breaks to the upside. If we zoom out a little bit, go to the weekly chart, you can see this October 21, uh, 2021 support. Um, it's pretty crucial, right? Um, you got a pretty big rally to the upside. Comes back down, breaks it very temporarily, but um, ends up reclaiming it. So that, that could be telling a little story there. Um, and then if we zoom to the one day, you know, we do have our one day breakout. Um, you'd be ideally looking for a break over 2704. Um, so we're going to go ahead and right click this, add alert to horizontal trend line. Um, we can even add an alert name breakout, right? So that way we know it's happening. So, yep, just a downtrend break looking for 2704. Um, ideally, it might be a quick like day trade. If you did do a swing trade, there is a nice little gap here um, that you can fill. So if you got time on contracts, you could hold out and use this gap fill as a price target. Um, short term, you'd be looking at you know the daily 50 EMA as a price target, um, which is like right where the gap starts. So I mean, if, if your hands are good enough and you can hold, um, you can hold through the whole gap. And there's another resistance right above that, 28, 28.90. So that's HP. Um, looking for calls. So just remember, all these I'm gonna be looking at calls. Um, you know, if it doesn't go our way, I'll switch, but, um, the technical analysis is showing a shift of focus to longs. Um, and we'll also go into the seasonality as well. And you'll see that, you know, this towards the end of October, uh, the market does tend to run up in midterm years. So we didn't get into QQQ. So we won't have to go over this one. Um, when we go into the indexes, because this is actually a setup that, you know, I do want to trade rather than just using it for analysis. So we see we got a breakout here. Um, if you looked at the futures too, it's it's literally the same thing. Um, maybe the pivot points for the trend line is a little bit different, but you do have a breakout on the ETF right here. Um, you'd be looking for a break over 277.21, and that puts you at your October peak. Um, you can even argue that this is a supply zone, um, which it could have trouble at. Um, you just need to be careful. Um, but you can see, I mean, the October peak matches directly with this 38.2% uh, Fibonacci level. Um, so that means that if it got up to 38.2, uh, it's retraced 38.2% of its move from this point down to this point. So that's all Fibonacci retracements are. You're just kind of measuring out in percentage, seeing how much it retraced. But yeah, so QQQ, you'd be looking at calls. Um, preferably a 277.21 breakout. Um, it'd probably give you good confirmation, but you'd be trading inside supply. So you'd be looking at longs inside supply, which is very risky. Um, so you'd want to be careful with that. But otherwise, I mean, if, if you want to have exposure to the big tech earnings, this is probably the best way to do it without getting crushed. Because, um, yeah, I mean, Apple and Microsoft could make QQQ, you know, go crazy and, you know, move a couple percent, but... You know, at least you know you wouldn't get crushed as bad as if you traded the, the direct earnings. So, yep. So you're just looking for that 277.21 break calls. Um, QQQ would really need to get over the supply too. So we need to see it do something like find this real quick. We need QQQ to get over the supply. Maybe even make a base right there before trying to go higher. Um, 
that would be the ideal thing for bulls. So bears, they, they might have a case, you know, right here for puts that supply, but um, we'll have to see. I'm just really going off seasonality, um, which we'll, we'll get into. There is a, it does average a small dip, um, but I mean, it's really nothing to be honest. It's, it's nothing like concerning, like how we've seen in, you know, other days on the seasonality chart. So next we'll go into Navita. So another big tech play. Luckily, they don't have earnings for a good little minute here. You'd have time to, you know, maybe catch a move, maybe play the pre-earnings run up. But you could see just a beautiful falling wedge breakout, back tests, holds. You'd be looking for move back up to supply. We'd probably try to reject right there, or maybe you'd even go up to like this 50 EMA and try to reject right there. So just using um, levels and moving averages as a price target. But really nice setup. Stop loss, you'd probably want to keep it, you know, if you're doing like a swing trade, you need maximum under this 52-week low. If you're doing like a day trade, it'd be, you need to be under like Friday's low, something like that. Um, but risk management, I mean, that's going to be kind of sub, uh, subjective to your account. So um, however much money you have in your account is going to determine how long you could hold something or how big you went in a position. Um, that's going to determine your risk as well. So you, have, you got the confirmed breakout already. <clears throat> Looking for a move to supply, maybe even the daily 50 EMA. And that's calls as well. So all calls, all five setups. Looking at calls. All right, here's a firm. This is another falling wedge setup on kind of similar to Navita. Maybe not as clear on the breakout, but you can see it attempted right here, rejected off supply, went back inside the downtrend. Now it's poking back out. Um, so you could even argue that this is probably like a back test before the breakout, um, which usually is a pretty good setup. So I'd say you'd be seeing a move back up to the supply, the same one it rejected off before going back in. Um, it's about $20. So um, it'll give you a nice little move. You just want to be careful at this level. Same with QQQ. Um, both of these are going to be running into supply. So you just want to be careful there. Um, Maybe you have time on your contract so you can hold throughout the supply, and that goes for QQQ too. Um, I mean, you don't have to day trade inside supply, but if the setup looks nice enough and you feel like sentiment is good, then um, just make sure you keep a tight stop. Maybe even trail it out, keep a trailing stop loss um, in case it does react to supply. So that's all. You just want to be careful. Stop loss on this, you'd just be looking at under Friday's low. Um, for a day trade, swing trade, you'd be looking at, you know, under this low. This, what is that? That July, July, June low. Um, and they do have earnings coming up. So um, if you did a swing trade, you wouldn't be in for that long. So just be careful about that. Next, we're going to JD, JD.com, a uh, Chinese, Chinese ticker. Um, JD and Bob are probably my two favorite. I like PDD as well. Um, last week, we had PDD in our watch list, but it never confirmed a setup. So... It, it did break break down a little bit, but it did gap back up on Monday, holding the uh, the uptrend line. So you never got confirmation for puts. Um, really good call setup, though. I mean, if if you're able to capitalize on that, good for you. Um, I was focusing more on puts because of the downtrend break, but it did gap up and hold that. So never gave the setup. But JD, you're looking at a drop base rally demand zone. Um, you can see it's holding the general area, puts in a nice like bullish hammer right here. Um, and close back inside demand. So you'd be looking at, um, here we can even widen this up a little bit. So you'd be looking at move, hopefully back to the trend line, maybe even that supply, and it'd probably try to reject right there. Um, something like that. So really, you're, you're just playing the free space from demand back up to the trend line, um, which you'll see I, I do pretty commonly. Um, sometimes I'll play directly off the trend line. Sometimes I'll play off the levels and then trade back up to the trend lines. So trend lines just give you really good, um, <clears throat> they help you make good decisions. And um, We had an Apple trade last week that um, we bought low and then just sold it to the trend line and it was, it was perfect, honestly. But now Apple's breaking out pretty hard. I was going to put that on my watch list this week, but you know they do have earnings, so you have to be careful. Um, I'm not an advocate for playing earnings unless you're doing like a, like an option spread, you know, debit spread, calendar, um, stuff like that. 
maybe even an iron condor. So you got JD, you're looking at calls, drop base rally demand, holding demand. Um, you're looking for a move back to the trend line. Um, if you're doing a day trade, it'd probably just be, you know, looking for a move back up to this daily level or something like that, like 43.65. So, um, and since it's so close to the lows, you'd need a stop loss under Friday's low. Um, but this is a good risk to reward, right? I mean, all the way back up to the trend line or somewhere around here, and then your stop is, you know, below this 52 week low. I mean, it's a pretty good risk to reward. So, another counter trend trade. Now, we'll go into the indexes. So, this is ES, or, you know, it's S&P 500. It's the same thing as SPY uh, as we go over. I just wanted to get into the futures because they're already open, um, and it is, it is up a pretty significant amount. So, um, I could have tracked the, the ETFs, but there's a good chance it might not give us the same reading um, as the futures currently are. So, you can see we have a downtrend line, only two tests. So, there's a good chance it's going to come back up for a third test. Um, it doesn't have to be this week or anything like that. I mean, it could test it down here, down here, um, but this is just something to consider. So you got your first test, test number two. The trend's not even valid to test number three. So there's a good chance it, it will go for the third test. And you can see we had a crazy day Friday. There's like a pivot rumor from somebody and Wall Street was pushing on that. So um, probably bullshit per usual, but um, We'll have to see. Maybe they're even talking about just the Fed slowing the pace um, rather than a complete stop and, you know, considering cutting rates, which they're probably not going to do until 2023, 2024, or something like that. But uh, you can see this October peak resistance. Um, we're going to have to break that period. So we're going to have to have it get over, get to the trend line, maybe even make a base off the October peak before trying to break out. Um, Bears, they do have a good case of this rejecting right here, which is pretty obvious. Um, you got the daily 50 EMA right here as well, so we'd have to get over that. Honestly, the QQQ looks a little bit better than this does. Um, but, I mean, it just depends, right? Like We'll just have to see how earnings goes. and um, I wouldn't say there's any specific setup on SPY or QQQ at the moment. Could maybe take a short-term day trade uh, puts off this resistance or even trade it, you know, if it opens up around here at the open, I'd probably give you, you know, maybe a good swing trade, but you don't, you don't really want to go against the seasonality, which we'll look at now since we're on ES. This is the SPX um, seasonality. So tomorrow is going to be Monday the 24th, and then it goes up to, what is that, like the 29th? So that's our, this is our 24th to 29th. You can see it's a pretty small dip, um, nothing too crazy. And this is all midterm years. This is like 2022, 2018, 2014, 2010. And this is what we've pretty much been tracking um, all the year. It's been pretty accurate. So you can see it averages like 0.19% um, gain, nothing too crazy, but you can see it does maybe average a small dip, just something to consider. But we do have earnings coming up. So um, a lot of the companies, they had such low expectations from the analysts that um, they were able to beat, So except for Snap. <clears throat> but Netflix did good, and a couple other companies did pretty good. So um, we'll have to see how that goes. But yeah, just be mindful of the seasonality dip. Nothing crazy. Maybe that could give bears a case at this resistance, but... Um, I mean, you do want to be careful because you, you can just see, you know, once November starts coming around, it's it's just crazy. So maybe don't look at put swings or anything like that. Uh, if you're going to do swings on calls, just, you know, have time on your contracts. So, yep, that's just the level we're watching. Um, no trend line in the way right now. We have to wait for that to test. Um, you're just watching the October peak. Um, that's it. Then we'll go into RTY, which is the small and mid caps, the Russell 2000. Looks a little bit different. Um, you do have a confirmed breakout almost. This daily candle isn't outside. You have the 50 EMA in the way. Um, but you got one, two, three tests. This is its fourth. So there's a good chance it could break out. Um, we'll just have to see how the Monday closes. Um, if it does break out, you'd be looking for a move back to this 38.2, which is 1794. Um, 
By the way, this is connected to IWM. So, you know, same thing we were looking at on our other videos. It's just the futures. So what is that, 1794? Yeah, so you see about a 30-point move that this can break out. Um, if it needed to get above that, it would have to break over it, make support on previous resistance before trying to go higher. So that's all the market is, just making structures. Um, and it's not going to go straight up or down all the time. Uh, you're going to have a lot of wiggle woggles and zipping that and zipping this, you know, to go higher. So Next, we're going to the VIX. So this is the S&P 500 Volatility Index. Um, You'll know I tracked the 2022 average close on this. Uh, it essentially just takes the you know the 2022 data, every single close, and just implements it into an average. So that's all it is. And you can see, last week we were looking you know to watch the 35 level. Um, we didn't want it to get over 35, or it could get very volatile. Bears would be eating hard. Um, we were able to reject it, kind of make a base on the S&P. But now we're back to this trend line. So we're back to the trend line. Ideally, bears, they want to see it hold up here. Um, bulls, you'd want it to, you know, get under that and get under the daily 50 EMA for a mean regression back to the average, which, I mean, we obviously, it, a mean regression always happens. So the VIX goes high, it's always going to snap back to an average. Um, that's just the way it works, to be honest. It's really just showing you short-term volatility. But you can see we did stay elevated all this year which gave us our 26, uh, 22 average close. We'll go to our data. Um, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. We had a 29.68 close, which brought it up to 26.22, and you can see the average down here. Um, here's the 50 uh, EMA I implemented, similar to our chart. So, yeah, that's gonna be the level. Um, bulls are gonna wanna see it fall back towards. Um, bears are gonna see it over that and keep seeing this increase. Because um, that would make their meme regression price target a little bit, you know, tighter, and it wouldn't be as brutal. Sorry about that. All right, and next we'll go into the dollar. So this is the dollar index, U.S. dollar. If you didn't know, this pretty much is inverse to the market. Um, strong dollar, not good for stocks, not good for profits, and corporate-wise. corporate, wi corporate wise, And, um, I mean, it's just been ripping and running all year. So, if you can see it's at the trend line. We're going to want to see this break um, and also get under the 50 EMA, same as the VIX. Um, otherwise, I mean, you see if it just consolidates up here, it's still elevated. It's not the greatest for stocks. You want to see this falling aggressively. Maybe even see it come back down to 110.05. Um, you can see we have a strong peak right here. And if we zoom out a little bit, here, let's go to the weekly chart. This is where the trend line really shows. Um, the one that we have right there is just short term. This is going to be our main right here. So this is our main trend line. I'll make it red real quick. I'm just not matching the moving averages. All right, so we got a red trend line. That's, that was our short term. We're going to want to see, it, um, see the dollar come back down to this main one right here. This is probably the biggest one, to be honest. You can see it's got one test, two, three, four. So it's already got four tests on that. Um, so yeah, you want to see it come back. This is our short term. The one going this way is our long term. You want to see our short term break and, you know, head back to the longer term trend line. Um, and eventually we're going to want to see that longer term trend line break. So it'd probably do something like this, hold up before trying to break to the downside. Um, if it does indeed want to do that and currency traders are, you know, able to start selling. So, yep, that's everything guys. Uh, looking at five setups, all calls, um, indexes you can see on the futures, uh, yes, at resistance, RTY getting close to breaking out and can run back to 1794 or um, close back in the downtrend it can go lower so we're just watching those um, VIX you want to see you know breaking the trend line uh, DXY we want to see breaking the short term trend line to go to the longer term one so um, you have trade safe guys I hope I hope you guys enjoyed this um, I'm going to put them out every week so 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and end this, get to editing so I can get it up for y'all, and I'll see y'all Monday. Thanks so much for watching.